Yeah, so I think what we clearly know is it's a biologically uniform group of patients that does uniformly poor. So the median survivals in AML are six months and MDS may be more in that you know nine to 10 month range. But regardless, if you look at MDS excess blast in AML, which is really the group we'd like to put together, their survival curves are superimposable right around that six month mark. And actually regardless of clonal burden, allelic state, whatever you wanna look at, which is a lot of discussion for P53, the outcomes are very poor. And so what many of us would argue is that this should become one disease entity and not this arbitrary distinction of whether or not you have MDS or AML, because what is very clear is we need urgent therapy specific for this molecular subset. And actually, I think we really need to think in many of our trials going forward, you know, is P53, should they be included or should they not be included? This may have actually set back multiple agents and at the same time may have slow development for that group. Why they're such a challenge is they are somewhat intrinsically chemo resistant. Um, they're actually a direct driver of, of, of resistance also to you know, BCL2 inhibition or venetic lax. And a lot of abilities for agents to work require functional P53, which is a challenge. So we're really trying to look at novel therapies to get around that. Um, you know, one key consideration had been epronetopopt or APR246, um, which got all the way through phase three and, and, and CR rates were higher, but not statistically significant. I still want to hold out some hope, you know, are there um, subsets of patients or other novel combinations with that agent that we can move it forward? There's actually been some very high level publications, including maintenance um, post allergy genetic transplant um, with azacitidine, which showed a very encouraging data. So I really hope we can still potentially move that forward. Magrolimab, again, it's unclear if it's really P53 specific or because it's a novel IO-based therapy, are we able to get around requiring functional P53 and we're just seeing a bad group do well. Sabatolumab has had some intriguing durations of CR in that group of patients, albeit um, you know, some small subsets. But I think the bottom line is it's a uniformly poor group of patients that really requires unique studies focused on it. And we really hope to put MDS AML together going forward with pivotal strategies.